Hello and welcome to Bar Chart Target Markers. My name's Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. We are trying to build this. All right, what is this? This uh, plots sales and forecast. So it makes it easy for the user to see how our sales is doing compared to the forecast. Um, and, and maybe you're not doing sales and forecast. Maybe you're doing expense versus budget or headcount to plan, you know, this, this type of relationship. Um, and, and so we're going to build this using an Excel bar chart. And, you know, as with anything in Excel, there's tons of different ways to build this. The solution that I'm going to demonstrate um, does not require us to have any additional helper columns or calculations. Right? It's just going to use a basic bar chart uh, and, and just use these values. So let me go ahead and delete it. And nope, don't worry. We're, we're going to build that from scratch. Um, and, and before we get started, I would like to thank our sponsor for this post, Dropbox. I've personally been using Dropbox for at least the last seven years. Uh, they do a great job and, and they continue to innovate and come out with great um, capabilities and features. And so here's a question. What happens when we build and complete this amazing chart or we build some incredible Excel workbook? How are we going to deliver it? Well, you know, if it's small, maybe we just attach it to an email. But what if it's big and we want some security? Well, maybe using an email attachment isn't the best idea. Maybe instead we use Dropbox. And they have a file sharing system that allows you to share files um, by using a link and you can have security you know, options and passwords and stuff. So definitely check that out rather than attaching these large files um, to, to an email. Now, to build our chart, we're going to select any value within the table and select insert and we want to go with bar chart okay and let me just clean up a couple quick things here for us i'm just going to take off this and this i'm going to put a little title in here i'm going to call this um, sales versus forecast okay fine now let's do our formatting the first step is to to set the series overlap and that's just how overlapped are these bars going to be? We want them fully overlapped. So the way that we do that is select uh, either of the bars and go to series overlap and we're just going to use this slider to go up to 100%. Okay. And now we just apply some formatting to this target value. In this case the target values are the forecast values but you'd select the target series and then we're going to go through each of these formatting uh, categories fill in line effects and series options let's start with fill in line and first we just need to remove the fill so I select no fill okay then let's go to the next one effects we're gonna set a shadow effect we're gonna use a color of black or whatever color you want transparency 0 size 100% blur 0 angle 0 distance I'm gonna go with 2 then we go to the series options and we plot this on a secondary axis. Okay, And now we've pretty much got it. There's a couple of things to be aware of. First of all, because of the values of my sales and forecast amounts, the uh, primary and secondary axes were plotted on the same scale. And that's something you got to keep an eye on because it just depends on the values. So if they are off from each other, then the markers aren't going to show up in the right spot. Then you're going to need to select it and set the bounds. And you want to fix them, you know, start with zero and then set the maximum for both primary and secondary uh, using this axis options uh, uh, settings. All right, but since ours are lined up here, I'm going to go ahead and just click that and delete it. There we go. Um, and then we really have a gap width. And we can set these uh, individually or independently. So for example, if I wanted to select my target series, I could set a gap width of, you know, 100%. You know, it changes it. Or maybe uh, 200% if I want them to be short. Uh, maybe 80% if I want them to be relatively wide. And then I could do the same kind of formatting for, for the sales bars. I would select the sales bars, set the gap width, you know, to 100 uh, or, or any other values, but that's using this gap width is how I control sort of the relative heights of, of the bars and markers. Okay, good. All right, now what if we're doing a column chart where the bars are actually vertical instead of horizontal? 
Well, we have kind of a shortcut way to do that. We can use this same approach. Now we would just change the angle to 270, and I'll show that here. But there is even an easier way to do it when, when, when we're using column charts, and it's just to use line markers. Now the issue is it's easier to set up, but we don't have as much sort of control over the height um, and width of the markers. So let me just kind of demonstrate this. Let me delete this. Let me go ahead and insert, and I'm going to insert a combo chart. And for the line, I'm going to go in and select no line. For the marker, I'm going to select marker options, built in, and I'm going to pick this. You can actually pick any of these, but I'm going to pick this one. And then we just set the size. Okay, so we can pick whatever kind of size we're after. That's fine. And then we can, you know, define the fill color, fine, uh, no border, fine, and then we got it. Now these marker sizes are set, and so they don't sort of uh, adapt very well when we're changing kind of the dimensions. For example, see they're, they're fixed. If we go way out here, you know, see they're fixed. Um, but that's a pretty easy way to set it up. Um, but if you want more control over that or if you want them to be dynamic, let's go with our shadow approach. Let me go ahead and delete this. Select and insert. We're going to go with a column chart. And let me go ahead and just remove this and this. I'll just take off this for now. And now let's go ahead and set our series overlap. So we select either of these bars. We go to series options, series overlap, and 100. Okay, we select our target series. And then we're going to go through each of these three series um, formatting options. First, line and fill. No fill. Next, effects. We want black or whatever color you want. Transparency 0, size 100. Blur is 0. Angle, when we're going straight up and down, is going to be 270. And distance, I'm going to go with 2. All right. Then on series options, we go secondary axis. We confirm that the scales are the same. Since they are, I'm just going to delete this. And now I can control, uh, I can control um, the widths here using the gap width. So maybe I want to select my target series and set a gap width of, I don't know, let's call it 80%. And maybe I'm going to select um, my sales bars. And maybe we go with a gap width of, let's say, 100%. That's fine. Um, so anyway, that is how we can create uh, target markers when we're using bar or column charts. And now that we're done, hey, if we need to share this, this big workbook out with everyone, we can use uh, Dropbox for file sharing. So anyway, hope this helps. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University.